Alright, so this uh, lesson is going to be getting you ready for the quiz today, just reviewing a few more MCA topics uh, with you. Uh, first one is just a warm-up question review, solving a quadratic. This is an x squared, right? So there's, uh, when you have an x squared and an x, the method used to solve it is takes a little bit of work. So try one of these methods here, uh, pause the video. Um, if you need the quad formula, you can look it up. Um, there's actually a formula sheet in today's folder that has it. That's the formula sheet you're given on the MCA test, so you can look it up there, or just Google search for it if you want to go that route. Okay, so anyways, hopefully you had a chance to try this. My personal opinion, um, you can factor this, but I don't like factoring when you got to do the long factoring, because there's a 2 here, and you can't factor it out as a GCF, so you got to do 2 times negative 5. So I don't like doing long factoring, because that takes a lot of time. So... Um, I also don't like the quad formula because it takes a lot of time. So what I would actually do is graph it and find the x-intercept. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, type it into my y equals screen. So 2x squared minus 3x and minus 5. So you got to make sure 0 is on one side, but we already got that here. So I'm just going to type it in and hit graph. And then my window is all messed up, so it's crossing somewhere in here. So I'm going to do zoom, and I'm going to zoom to the standard window 6. Okay, so you can start to see that it crosses, it looks like at negative 1, and then this one I'm not really sure on, it's somewhere between 2 and 3. So this is where your zoom feature can help. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to move my little cursor over here, somewhere in that vicinity, and then hit enter to zoom in. And then you can start to see it's it's right on two and a half, and you can you know click over here and you can find that it takes a little bit of time, but it ends up being like right on two and a half. Okay, so my answers are uh, negative one and two and a half. I want to zoom back to the standard window just so you can see that one more time. So when you graph, the the answers are just where it crosses. So I have negative one and two and a half. All right, and so just real quick too, if you want to see the quad formula for this one, um, just remember the reminders with that, get zero on one side, which again, we already have, and this is A, B, and C. So A is two, B is negative three, and C is minus five. So the quad formula would be, our answers for X are the opposite of B, three plus or minus the square root of B squared, minus 4 times a of 2 times c of minus 5. And you're going to divide all that by 2a. So 2 times 2. And then when I do these, I always just do the radical first. So um, that's going to be a square root of negative 3 squared, which is 9. And then you have minus and a negative. So those will actually turn into a plus. So 4 times 2 times 5 is uh, 40. Right, so you're going to get root 49, which is 7. So our answers for x are going to be 3 plus or minus 7 over 4. Okay, and then if you actually have to find the decimal answers, at this point you just do like 3 plus 7 divided by 4, and 3 minus 7 divided by 4. That's what that plus minus means. So that gets us, this one would be 10 over 4 which is the 2.5 answer we got from before. And this one would be negative 4 over 4, which would be the minus 1 answer we got. So um, just a quick review, if you wanted to solve that with quad formula, you get the same answers. But I like the graph method, right? This one you actually also could have factored, but um, that's a quick review of, of some more solving. Okay, so uh, to get you ready for the quiz you're going to take today, um, I want to go over volume and surface area. So they give you a bunch of formulas. You see on the formula sheet out there today, uh, here's some circle formulas, and then here's some volume and area. Sorry, surface area and volume. The tricky part is they're not very specific. So when I do these questions, I'm going to try to help you just sort of focus on the, the basics of it. So because um, these formulas I find aren't all that helpful, other than maybe the circle ones, if you forget the circle stuff. But Anyways, um, let's start doing some. So surface area is like the area uh, on the outside of this, if you were to, to paint it. 
And so what I would recommend doing is like doing it face by face. So there's there's six total faces. So like the top and bottom is just 16 square centimeters because they're both four by four. So when I do my surface area, I know it's gonna be 16 plus 16, and then I just gotta to start to do the other sides. So maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out the other faces, what they will be. Okay, so the right and left um, will always be the same. So that's four times nine, so it's 36 here and 36 there. So I have 36 plus 36, I'm adding to my total. And then the front and back are the same uh, as the sides. Sometimes they're different, but on this particular one, they're the same because it's four by nine again. So the front face would be another 36, and then the back face back here would be another 36. So my surface area would be all of those numbers added together. So it would be 32, 72, and another 72. So if you add all those up, I think it's 176 uh, square centimeters. Okay, so uh, I'm going to surface area now, but this one is a uh, cylinder, so it's a little bit tricky. Um, but again, as much as I can, I'm going to try to think of the, the faces. Okay, so the, the trick I'll give you here is like, if you were to cut it apart and unroll it, you would get a rectangle in the, the, the middle part, and then you'd have two circles for the top and bottom. Right, so when we find the surface area, um, it's kind of like think of unrolling it, and then all of those things added together would be your surface area. So pause the video and see if you can find the surface area here. Okay, so we've got uh, the uh, middle rectangle. Um, the one dimension is six, so this six matches the height right here. And then what the other dimension is, is when you unroll it, it's the circumference. So this part right here is two pi radius. Okay, so that's gonna be for us, the radius is gonna be four, it looks like. So if we break radius four, this would be eight pi. Okay, which means then the rectangle would be six times eight pi, which is just be 48 pi square units. Yeah, so that's going to be our surface area, the start of it. And then you've got two circles, each with a radius of 4. So the area of this, uh, remember area for a circle is pi radius squared. So this would be 4 squared times pi, so this would be 16 pi. And we'd have another 16 pi down here. So I've got to add to my existing surface area 32 pi. Okay, so our total surface area is all that added together. Um, and so that would be 80 pi. Okay, so when you do surface area, I try to, as much as I can, you know, figure out the different faces and go from there. I do it visually as much as I can. Okay, so let's try some volume then. So um, volume is in the cubic units. Okay, and so... Basically, what I kind of think of is, is this little thing down here, this little base face, which is what they call it, it has an area of 16 square centimeters. So that part is just 16, but then you're going to take that and extend it up like for nine layers because it goes up by nine. So basically, you take the base times the height. So they call this like the big B base area. If you look at the formulas, there's this big B base. So you have to do base times height. So here I'm going to do 16 times 9, and that's going to be 90 plus 54, so that's 144 cubic centimeters. Okay, so uh, when we do the volume of this guy, it's going to be very similar, except our base is a circle shape. So pause the video and see if you can do big B base times height. Okay, so our base face is the circle, so it's pi radius squared. So it's pi times 4 squared, so that's 16 pi, right? So that's the base is 16 pi, and we're going to multiply it by a height of 6. So our answer is going to be 96 pi, whatever that is. So I'm just going to leave it in terms of pi. If you needed a decimal, you could obviously type it in your calculator, but that's going to be your volume.
Okay, so I want to do the same two shapes now, but volume of pyramids, right? So they're the exact same shape except a pyramid. And so all that's different is instead of doing base times height, we have only a fraction of what we did before because we essentially took um, this picture and like pinched it in, right? We, if you imagine the top and just pinching it in, that's what a cone is. Okay, so what happens is the formula is base times height, but you just do times a third, right? So for this particular shape, um, it would be one third, and then the base again was 16, and the height was 9. Okay, so we have a slightly less uh, volume, and so it's one third times 16 times 9. Remember the base is 4 times 4 is 16, right? So if you multiply all that together, I think you get 48 centimeters cubed. So it's the same as before, just essentially times by third or divide. Okay, so see if you can do it for um, our cone here. It's the same thing, except with just a times third. So instead of, you know, it's a lot to formulas to remember, but the difference between a cone and a, and a cylinder is you just make it times a third. Okay, so hopefully you had a chance to try it. The base again is 16 pi pi radius squared, so pi times 4 squared, and the height is 6. Okay, so it's just a third of what it was before. So basically, we'd get 2 times 16 pi, so this would be 32 pi, would be the uh, value, right? So that should be a third of what we had before. It was 96, so now we have just 32 pi as our value. Okay, so kind of in summary of this, there's a lot of formulas. I'm going to go back to our formula sheet for volume and surface area. But in general, like instead of trying to remember all these formulas, so here's your volume. Um, like here's what we did. We did base times height, and then we did a third of base times height. Um, you know, I would just try to like, you know, do what makes sense, I guess. Right? Especially for the surface area. You have all these goofy formulas, but like I would try to unfold it and, and see if you can find the, you know, the, the area of each little face and then add them all together. Right? Um, the last two on here, by the way, these uh, surface area and volume, those are for a sphere, for like a baseball or basketball shape. So if you ever need those, those are those two shapes there. So that's all I got uh, for this review. Um, oh, actually, I have two probability questions. Maybe I'll make a second video quick that'll go over some probability uh, that'll help with today's quiz too.